Download the free PhysioTutors app now and become the best clinician you can be. Loading of the knee to treat patellar tendinopathy, which manifests as pain located in the anterior knee, is well established as a treatment method, supported by a large body of evidence. But besides patellar tendinopathy, other common sources of anterior knee pain can include patellofemoral pain, Osgood-Schlatter, etc. Anterior knee pain can be focal or more diffuse, depending on the exact source of symptoms, and the knee can respond differently to load in both cases. This study wanted to investigate the association between patient reported pain location and load tolerance to a single leg knee extension isometric exercise. In a secondary analysis of data collected from an RCT, this study included healthy basketball players over 17 years. Besides taking baseline anthropometric measurements, a single leg decline squat was used as a pain provocation test for the anterior knee. Standing on a 25 degrees inclined board with the back against a wall, the patients performed a squat to a range that provoked pain, or in case no pain arose, to a maximum of 90 degrees of knee flexion. Pain was registered on a numeric rating scale from 0 to 10, and the location of pain was defined on a pain map. Hereafter, the researchers rated the pain map and classified the pain location into either diffuse or focal pain. Focal anterior knee pain was defined as the pain area being less than 2 cm in surface area. Low tolerance was determined by having the participants perform a single leg isometric extension on a knee extension machine. The leg was held at approximately 60 degrees for 45 seconds. It was ascertained that the load was heavy enough so that they experienced muscle fatigue at the end of the 45 second hold. The other way around, when the load was too heavy to hold or in case the load was pain provoking, the load could be reduced. So, is there an association between the location of the anterior knee pain and the load tolerance of the knee? Let's find out. The results revealed that luckily, most of these participants had no pain provocation upon performing the single leg isometric extension. 98 participants reported diffuse pain and 58 had focal pain. Of those 58 participants with focal pain, 19 reported inferior pole pain, corresponding to the author's criteria for patellar tendinopathy. It was seen that the athletes reporting diffuse pain had lower low tolerance compared to those without pain after adjusting for sex, years played, BMI and team characteristics. Athletes with focal pain showed equal low tolerance than those without pain. When the single leg decline squat provoked high levels of pain, low tolerance was lower. The association was consistent but non-linear. When pain levels exceeded 5 out of 10, a sharper drop in the load that could be tolerated was seen, especially in males. Important to note is the cross-sectional design, which limits the establishment of a cause-effect relationship. Now, in practical terms, what should we learn from these findings? Knowing that loading the knee for rehabilitation is beneficial, these results may help you to determine a starting point for early load prescription for isometric knee extension. Not everyone has the same load tolerance, for sure, but this study indicates that in patients with diffuse pain, you should maybe opt for lower loads to start with than you would have to in patients with focal pain. Patellofemoral pain is often characterized as a more diffuse pain, and during the isometric single leg extension, the knee is put into a position where large compressive forces are produced. This position may not be equally provocative for those with more focal reported pain, and this is, on the other hand, more likely a feature of patellar tendinopathy. Here, pain provocation is more likely to arise during activities that store and release energy, thus during more concentric and eccentric demands. The single leg decline squat in combination with the registration of the pain on a pain map may be a useful test to determine the low tolerance of an isometric single leg knee extension. Those with focal pain may tolerate heavier loads than those with more diffuse pain patterns. A higher pain level may be indicative of a lower load tolerance and thus the use of lower weights with an isometric exercise to start therapy may be required. Alright, 
This was it for this synopsis video. I hope you learned something by watching. For a ton of more research related content, I refer you to our website or our Physio Tutors app. There you'll also find a course with Claire Robertson on the management of patellofemoral pain as a cause of anterior knee pain. This was Ellen for Physio Tutors. See you in the next video.